Bridges are wild. Four of a bridge beats a royal bridge. You see a bridge? They raise you three bridges. Bridge! Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Triple Dummy. I'm Peter Hollins and with me as usual we've got Nick Jacob and Elena Moskowski and this week we're lucky enough to have guest speaker Ishmael Del Monte. Thanks for joining us. Um, so uh, we're going to discuss the uh, Fantunes cheating scandal a lot today and uh, we'll just chuck it over to Nick to let us know what's happening. Okay, so we all thought that when the Fisher and Schwartz scandal uh, came out, so I, sorry, disclaimer, I say all of us as in the three of us who are not Ishmael, uh, all <laughs> thought, okay, so the Fisher Schwartz scandal is out, the, one of the top pairs in the past five years has been blatantly cheating and getting away with um, signaling what leads they would like, everyone knows that leading is one of the hardest or most random elements of the game of bridge, and they're just removing that randomness from the game. Um, and then when the then fan tunes happened, and that really came, it was like a whisper from the shadows. <laughs> it was just you log you log on to bridge winners, and Kit Woolsey's got his article up the top saying uh, the videos speak Fantoni Nunez, and everyone who goes on there looks at it and is like, oh, 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 really? <laughs> Like, I mean, Ish, how, how often, how long have these guys been a, not just around, but winning the world's biggest titles for? 15 years? Uh, yeah, almost exactly 15 years. And it, well, actually, they've been, they were playing as juniors. Um, in the year 2000, uh, they entered the world pairs, and I think they did pretty badly. They didn't uh, do very well, and then two years later, they won. So uh, they must have got their... Uh, they act together in the film of uh, legal signaling pretty done pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was yeah. 2002, was it? Yeah, 2002. But um, we've only got video back to 2013 or something, thanks to like Treon or whatever introducing that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, well, um, 2011, Treon actually had some videos in the Bermuda Bowl, but uh, unfortunately not in the transnationals. <laughs> um, the Transnationals was um, one of the matches that I actually analysed without video after Boyer was outraged, Boyer Brogland, who actually has been the, uh, I think Jeff Mextroth has called him the new sheriff, <laughs> and watch out everyone, there's a new sheriff in town. So uh, after he lost by one, which was probably the best thing that could have happened for World Bridge, uh, he decided <laughs> to go and uh, have a look at uh, all sorts of hands and the reason that um, this happened was wasn't just because he just lost by one, but because a lot of strange things had happened at his table, strange things that happened at the other table. Uh, he found out about three times that uh, Loton Fisher had claimed um, trying to take extra tricks. Uh, so twice was against uh, Hugh Burton's and uh, um, Dan Corbell, and they were like, no, no, no. We oh, we just lost Ish, unfortunately. Hopefully, we'll be back shortly. Sorry about that. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering who that picture of that's actually. They tried to play twice against. Am I back on? Or? Yeah, you're back on, just your video's not on. Yep, we can hear you. Oh, my video, yeah, sorry. That's we want to look at your pretty face. Probably better for most people. But. <laughs> um, <laughs> against um, Corbell and Burton's, and they actually realised that uh, these claims quickly were not accurate, and they said, uh, no, we don't accept. And then they had a claim against uh, Richie Swartz and uh, Alan Graves. And it happened on BBO. The guy just put his cards back in the slots. They didn't actually check it. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until Boyer went through the hands and said, wait on, like, how did we lose an imp on this board? And they told him what happened. And they said, well, didn't you last to see his hand? And they said, yeah. But he didn't have any losers when we looked at his hand. So no one knows for sure what happened but we can only assume that uh, he had hidden his car, a card because when before he showed them his hand they said he put his hand under the table to sort it and when he pulled his hand back out again like they couldn't see uh, any more than tricks that they'd already taken so they accepted making 11. So it was like a no-lose situation because he didn't make any statements so either they say 10 or they say 11 and no one knows anything the wiser. Yeah. So then when Boyer approached him the next day, of course, he was more than happy to play new boards knowing he was out of time. 
<laughs> and uh, so, of course, nothing happened. And Boy had been told by a number of us that, you know, these guys are dodgy. What are you doing playing with them? Um, and I know what he says, what he means. When you're a teammate of someone, you don't go through their hands. You're annoyed enough with yourself. Yeah. So if you've lost, so you're not normally looking at your own hands or if you're winning, the last thing you're going to do is to go through a match when you're winning. So he did ask them a few questions here and there about some very weird things that happened. And uh, like one of one auction, one hand where they got uh, they doubled a contract a slam a partner with a heart. They doubled a six diamond slam. They had a heart from nine eight seven six when that was the logical lead, and everyone thought the double would ask for a spade. And they came up with this excuse: Oh yeah, we always play the double ask for a heart lead on that auction. It was like a random auction of a slam. It was just completely bizarre. Um, and so then Boyd decided to go through the set from other table when he didn't play there against them and he saw pretty much exactly what I saw when I went through the match from the transnationals. Now the only reason I did this, I called it the maze of Fisher Swartz, it's on bridgewinners.com. The only reason I actually went through that match was when I got back I rang Nabil, one of my good friends, uh, Nabil Edgerton, uh, bridge player, now poker player, <laughs> very talented at bridge, unfortunately he's uh, got into poker, he's realized there's more money in poker than bridge. Um, and he was going, oh my god, these guys, I'll use the expletives that he used, but he was saying, I was sure these guys were doing something against us, like everything was so weird. So he pulled up the match from bridge base and looked at a couple of the hands that they lost in some, and thought, oh wow, this is pretty weird, yeah, this is pretty, pretty weird. And so then, okay, I just thought, bugger, I just do a report on the entire match. And I included about half the hands in the, my report, and a lot of people go, you know, well, if you'd only included the hands which were obvious, then it would have been more compelling. But I wanted to just prove a point that they were leading every single time their partner's best suit. Yeah. I also put in a number of the bidding situations. It was just impossible to get all these bidding situations right. So my hypothesis before looking at any video was that they had a, a strength signal yeah. and a lead signal. And so it was just a matter of working out. Well, we worked out the strength signal pretty quickly. It was a uh, very uh, German doctorish, uh, basically. <coughs> <that. Yeah. laughs> they, um, they're never going to suspect coughing because, like, it's only just been done, you know. So, <laughs> so they were using coughing uh, in the, um, the match against um, in the European matches. They were using coughing to show their weakness, uh, and then someone else discovered the lead signal, um, and basically, obviously, they're unbeatable. Uh, there was a statistics done, which I actually just got you the, today from Boyer. I had a quick look at them. They were in the 90 to 95 percent of three different stats on opening lead in the European Championships for the last few years. Yeah. Meaning they would always lead, every time they led, they would hit an ace, king, or queen in their partner's hand. So uh, when the average was about, the average of the top experts was probably about 50 to 55 percent, they were 95 percent. Yeah. So what's interesting is in this list, first, second, and third, have now been either banned for court cheating or have been alleged court cheating. Like the people, they haven't actually been convicted yet, Fisher and Swartz and Fantoni Nunes, but they were first, second, and third along nice. with the doctors. Yeah. And fourth was Lanzarone Baratti, and they are also gone. <laughs> so it's a pretty good guide to see what something strange is happening. Uh, now, obviously, there are some other people up there um, that people are being uh, looked at. It's, no one is. Uh, no one is safe, put it this way. If you're out there and you're cheating in this video, we're going to get you. So just be careful. I mean, that the one who actually got me to look at that match, which um, if only there was video, so yeah. we would have uh, put them out a time earlier. So we, um, then they had one or two videos in 2013. They actually put an extra camera on because of the doctors. And then, um, as we know, in 2014, thanks to uh, the suggestion of Trian, who's actually Australian, he's a few ref quarter of the World Bridge Federation, they actually were only going to have two cameras. And he convinced them to have whatever matches they had on BBO to have cameras. And there were eight matches on BBO, so he convinced them to have eight cameras, even though they complained about the cost. Yeah. Now, to the European, um, no, is Europe, where is he now, the Bermuda Bowl, they've actually said they're going to have 12 cameras now. Well, it's not enough. I mean, I think at that level, they should have every table should be videoed. Obviously, if there's people mm -hmm. stooping to these lows to do these things, they need to have everything recorded. Low. So it's be like a form of uh, drug testing in a way. So you uh, yeah. talked about how the Fisher Schwartz started. 
how'd you get on to fan tunes? Uh... So, uh, well, basically, as, as Mixtrot calls us, we're like boys posse. <laughs> and um, he just, uh, I've been in, I basically talked to him probably once or twice a day um, about what's going on. And he said, okay, these guys are next. We're, go we're going after them. Boy, it was a, he's been unbelievable, actually. He has no fear. He rang up Fisher and Sports and told them that he's going to be getting them and it's best for them to come forward. Of course, they denied everything and to this day, they're still denying everything. Uh, they've even got a... There's a couple of uh, funny Facebook pages. One's called um, Fish, Fisher and Swartz are cheaters and one's called Fisher and Swartz are not cheaters. So you can guess uh, who, who is who. And um, they've got on the one that says it's not cheaters, it says 62 likes, but you can't actually click on it to see who the likes are. So it looks like it might be like a photograph or something that's just been put up there. Um, but that's actually very interesting reading that people want to have a look at that. <laughs> so boy, like these guys are in our sights. So uh, off we I went, and after already watching it, probably at least a hundred hours of video of Fisher and Swartz, I started watching a video of um, Fantonia and Nunez. And basically, we've got a bit of a crew that we started recruiting. And uh, Thomas Bassis took some matches, and Tom Tom Hanlon took some matches. And uh, thanks to this Dutch lady who I actually make make Mika, I think her first name is, but she actually doesn't want. Uh, the 10,000 people contacting her that she got the first time. <laughs> so, uh, she, she, she's actually found uh, some interesting, interesting information for other pairs, but she doesn't want her name uh, attached to that. So mm -hmm. just forget that I mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so basically we went looking at their videos and, and we actually found a lot of stuff. They were, little, well, in, in our opinion, uh, uh, they were not doing uh, Signals on the horizontal. For those of you who don't know, the hypothesis is that when they would lead a car and have it on the table vertically, it would mean to their partner that they basically like their lead. Um, they either have a singleton or they have a top honor or a hidden honor that you know they haven't showed, and their partner would do the same thing. If their partner liked the lead, they would put it vertically, or they would put it horizontally if they didn't like the lead or if they'd lead from no honors. So it meant they could false card a lot instead of just leading their thirds and fifths or whatever they were doing. They could lead any spot card because they could just tell their partner that they didn't have an honor. And they used these Slansky leads or something, which was, like, I don't even know, like I started reading it and I got a headache. <laughs> so um, that would sort of give a count and a signal about whether they had an honor or not. Yep. It struck down again. Yeah. Um, so... Instead of not knowing the count, um, they would know the count and the honor situation at the same time with the signal that they were allegedly given. Yeah. I'm going to actually connect to my phone because the, the internet's been pretty bad here, so... Uh, All right. Okay. Well, you might leave That's me for right. one second while I just change over. Yeah, no worries. That's all right. <sighs> so, oh, how much of this have you been keeping up with? Am I still here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, still here. Still there. Um, yeah, quite a bit. It's been really quite fascinating, to be honest. I'm a little bit addicted to knowing knowing all the secret signals. I think I mentioned that last time. But I just want to know what their methods are. Like I have to, it's like a it's like a logic puzzle that you have to solve. But um, the thing that bothers me most about the people who defend Fisher Schwartz, specifically Fisher Schwartz, is the people that are like, oh, you lose by one imp, and then someone goes on a rampage and you know tries to slander you or whatever. Yeah. It's like. Well, sure, that might be what triggered it, but that's a pretty pretty lame excuse okay. for people who are trying to defend them. It's yeah. annoying. Yeah. So, um, yeah. if I get cut off again, yeah. I haven't paid my phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, I just heard from Nick Farah from the chat room that uh, in Europe next year, there'll actually be 24 cameras. So, nice. not yeah. for the Bermuda Bowl, but the, for the European Bridge League... Um, the WBF should uh, be doing the same. Um, I hope there's no officials uh, actually watching this, but uh, what I'm about to say, uh, I might uh, try and delete. <laughs> I sent an email to uh, the World Bridge Federation president probably about five or six, maybe a week before this broke, this news of Fantonio Nunes broke, but we all knew what was going on. Um, under the cap of uh, high-level player, because I'm in the high-level players committee, rather than just being a Joe Blow emailing Gabriel Arona, yeah. And I said, hi, as a member of the high-level players committee, I have a very sensitive issue that I would like you to address. Uh, I told him who it was regarding, and I would like to talk to him 
like in a, you know about the sensitive matter. Uh, four days went by, maybe a day or two before we broke the news. Uh, he emails me back in a very sort of official capacity, basically telling me that any complaints need to come from the European Bridge League and have to be sent to the lawyer of the general counsel of the WBF, who will then take all the evidence and then we'll look at it and then they'll decide on a meeting or whatever. Basically, it looked like it was going to take a, a long time. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it wasn't a very favorable response. I thought the least I would get would be a phone call. But uh, since then, I've actually found that it, it was probably a bit hard for him because he has ties to the to these guys. He's known them since they were young. Yeah. So um, maybe he just didn't want to be involved in, in that aspect of it. But uh, I got a lot of uh, very good feedback from people in charge of European countries. Uh, and I've been working with them and uh, sending them information and... And including, um, I actually sent information to Philippe Cronier, who this was two days before it got published on Bridge Winners, to send it to Zimmer, uh, Zimmerman, and he actually spoke to Zimmerman, had a meeting with him, um, trying to get him to do the right thing. He didn't want to believe it because he actually plays on teams with uh, Zimmerman. Yeah. Um, so he didn't want to believe it, but when he saw the evidence, he was convinced, and uh, he organised a meeting with Zimmerman. And I think, I think maybe today or last night, they actually did finally pull out. Yeah, so for those that don't know, Monaco just recently pulled out of the Bermuda Bowl. Um, so mm. it was mentioned that just Fantoni and Nunes weren't going to be playing on the Monaco team, uh, but they've actually mm. withdrawn now. And, and I think so bear in mind, everyone who's watching, that there has been no uh, case heard about, by, you know, Fantoni and Nunes have, have not been actually charged with anything yet. They've been publicly um, hauled over the coals and uh, crucified. But um, they haven't actually been charged by any uh, governing body as of yet because obviously these things take time. So in my opinion, Boyer did really the right thing. The only way to get these guys out of the Bermuda Bowl was to basically stick it out there for public opinion. And then if they did go to the Bermuda Bowl, the, it would be a pretty hard atmosphere for them to be playing. And I mean, I think there would be a number of teams that might not even want, might, would refuse to play them if they went. Yeah. Mm. So they were basically in played, as it were. Yeah. To uh, do that thing. Good one. <laughs> like, like I was going to say before, before I so rude, rudely um, cut you off, uh, disconnected myself. Um, the other things that we noticed that were unusual with Fantoni Nunes were actually similar to Fisher Swartz. There were things like um, they always seemed to know when not to bid when they had good hands, um, which was very similar in a lot of the Fisher Swartz hands. They would pass on hands where almost all of us would overcall. There was one hand where I think um, at least half the tables went for 800 after a three diamond opening. You have ace jack nine to six spades and a couple of aces outside and your partner passes and they open three diamonds and almost everyone put three spades. David Gold did and Nunez passed. Uh, there is another hand he had balanced 16 point hand with ace king third of clubs and went past from his partner one club on his right. No one vulnerable and he passed again. Uh, it's a bit of a coincidence that on both of those hands, his partner had zero points and one point. Yeah. Uh, there was another hand where he also did a similar action where most of us would have bid. So on all of those three hands, there was, I don't know if the viewers out there know about the screen situation. You play with the screen so you can't see your partner. Most people who play with me love it when you play with the screen. <laughs> I certainly so did. Yeah. <laughs> so the screen going down so you can't see your partner. So um, the way to transfer illegal knowledge is supposed to be limited. However, the, it's a, in my opinion, they were doing things by putting the pass card. Normally, you put your pass card on the tray, and it normally goes all the way. The, there's a tray on the table, and your bid is fitted neatly in that tray, and everyone always pushes their bid right to the, the edge. Those of you who are interested, you can go and have a look. The England match is an excellent example. You'll notice that Fantoni often uh, didn't put his pass card all the way to the edge. And it seems like this might have been a coincidence, but every single time he left the gap before the edge and his pass card, he didn't have very many points. He had zero to four points every time. So when the tray gets pushed through, his partner can see there's a gap before the pass card. Oh, hello, my man doesn't have many points. Um, so that was one of the things we noticed. Uh, Nunes did not seem to pass the information the same way. He, he was always normal with his location of his bids. However, he would always talk to his opponents, uh, very animated. He would, one, in one match, he just randomly says "ciao" to his opponent, who it was like board eight. So, and on this hand, he had zero to four. 
So it was just a very uh, obvious situation. He was just like maybe he had done too much uh, moving around or talking or whatever. But uh, in this particular situation, we believe this was a way to signal that uh, he had no points. Um, we've discovered a few other things. Some of their two bids, um, they're very hard to play these two bids. I've actually um, know a few people who've tried. Uh, um, quite a one well an Australian pair play their system, Ben Thompson of Will Jacobs, and they were saying how hard it is to actually play their two bids. Um, they, if you have a look at their videos, you can try and work. Every time there's a two bid, have a look. Whenever there's five, the score sheet is on a table. Uh, side table that his partner can see. And yeah. whenever there are six, the score sheet cannot be seen. There's actually one That's match. Funny. It was, yeah. um, I was actually thinking about that one because I'd heard about that. And does that mean that they actually pick up the side table and put it, because normally the side table is where your partner can't see it, like it's in between the two on the same side yeah, of the screen. You can see it a does that mean they matches. actually have to pick it up and move it? Well, not, not in the middle of the match. <laughs> no, be a bit yeah, but at the start. Yeah. Because yeah, the video the actually match. starts maybe 20 minutes sometimes before the match starts. You can see on a couple of the matches Nunes arrives and the yeah. side table is not in a location where he can see it and he actually goes around to his partner's side of the screen and moves yeah, right. the side table to the other side. Yeah, right. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Wow. Because um, I was so, wondering whether he moved here. He must but the surely. problem with all these is the frequency wasn't high enough and like they didn't open enough of them for us to prove this that this was an accurate way that they were transferring illegal information. The report that um, we've just finished with a great help from uh, our man Nick there in the, <laughs> on the screen, he uh, was really awesome with this um, spreadsheet. We gave him the information, he came up with this awesome spreadsheet. I gave him like a tiny little Excel document saying, you know, like see what you can do and he probably just <laughs> laughed at it and uh, made an awesome <laughs> spreadsheet. Uh, which we're actually going to be using to send to the EBL organisers so they can actually use some untainted evidence uh, against um, Fantoni Nunes when the case comes because obviously these things could cost a lot of money and using the evidence that's already been online and viewed by thousands of people it's going to be hard to get sort of unbiased views. Yeah. Uh, the evidence on bridge winners is 100% correct and accurate but uh, there's actually a lot more things that they were doing in regards to the leading. It wasn't just every time they led to the first trick, it was their third hand, their partner would give the same information and any time they broke a suit, uh, we contend that they were doing a similar type of information. Yeah. And um, I'm sure Nick uh, can see from all the work, the, all the information he's put in and that we've collected, uh, it's a very accurate hypothesis and basically when they see the spreadsheet, the government bodies, it will make their job of convicting them a lot easier. So um, just ballpark figures on some of this stuff. It was like um, ballpark. Okay, well I got a match here, but let's have a look. Uh, Monaco versus Bulgaria. So we just did no number of times that they did trick one. Uh, Twenty number of cards fitting rule. Twenty the hypothesis. One hundred percent. And what that means is we're contending that they would show whether they had whether they were basically a simple layman's terms. Like the lead, don't like the lead. Simple yeah. as that. Like the lead, vertical. Don't like the lead, then <laughs> horizontal. Simple as that. That's basically an easy way to understand it. Um, I think the lowest, the lowest one was about eighty-five percent of a yep. match. Um, I and mean, we did twelve matches. There was only ten matches uh, disclosed on bridge winners. But there were, they actually played twelve matches on camera in the final stage. There were actually other matches that were played. In the qualifying, but out of 12 matches, basically the average of out of 323 times that where they the card was led uh, or third hand played, the our total average was 94 percent. That yeah. uh, so it's pretty hard to say that that's uh, coincidence. Um, ben yeah. Thompson did some maths for me when it was just the 10 matches, and the if uh, you want to write, see how big this number is, you write down a four and then you put 20 zeros after it. <laughs> so that the odds of it being uh, a coincidence. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's pretty irrefutable evidence. There, but obviously the governing bodies need stuff like this to make their case easier and to make sure that they can't be sued and you know, get the things over with quickly. Yeah. With the German doctors, it was um, you know, a lot, lot of... Even though the evidence was there on video, 
the video was really hard because it didn't start on board one and like they nearly didn't weren't going to use the video we actually had to get the hand records and work out where the video started and yeah. then go through the video slow motion and tell them like okay this is where it starts and we can go from here and you can see okay these hands they don't cough they have no singletons yeah. these hands they cough they have a singleton but these, uh, the video quality here was excellent, and it not only did it not start at board one, it actually started 20 minutes before they actually started play. So you actually got to see the players arrive and how they get ready, and Fisher Schwartz always had two bottles of water because that was part of their signaling method. They needed to make sure they had lots of water. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Nunez had to get there early to uh, decorate the furniture and get everything uh, sorted out so he could see everything. Okay. <laughs> um, had a question from the chat saying, "Did the teams know when they're be being recorded or not?" Well, they do know uh, they're being yeah, recorded. But you, uh, in the Europeans, the cameras are right there. I mean, in like maybe if you're oblivious and you don't know, but the cameras are there. But this leads me to the point the question asked earlier about how long were they doing it? They were doing it a long time, in my opinion, because like you're not just going to start cheating for that one event where there's cameras. Yeah. They were doing it for so long that they thought that they were like uh, indestructible, both of both pairs. Um, I think that is what happened on this famous hand uh, that actually might have been the beginning of the end for Fantonio Nunes when they led the ace, two aces against a slam. Partner played his card vertically. He just didn't stop to think that he could cash his other ace. And he just immediately played another one, gave his partner a rough before he knew it. It was like, oh, beautiful, singleton. Whereas we lead an ace and a partner plays the two, oh, beautiful, they like it, we continue. Yeah. It was a similar sort of situation. He just didn't stop to reassess the bridge logic of the hand. Uh, you can see this happen a lot with the Ron Schwartz with his monster hands. He's not looking at his hand. He's not trying to play bridge. He's just looking for the signal. Does my partner cough or do they not cough? And he just instantly passes on all these hands where he could afford to take a bid and it wouldn't matter. Yeah. After the Israeli case came out, we had stories from all over the world. One, one of the most, there were actually two really funny ones. Uh, Loton Fisher had uh, Queen Third, Singleton, Eight Solid, and Singleton, mm -hmm. and never took a bid because his partner had somehow showed that he liked hearts. And when one heart passed, two hearts passed, four hearts. And everyone was in five diamonds, one diamond, three, and he took four hearts, one diamond, his partner had King Jack, ten, nine of hearts. <laughs> But in the match against England, he had six mm -hmm. small spades um, and some eight or nine, count. I can't remember the exact hand, but he passed and his partner ever called hearts and he bid two spades and the opponents bid to five of a minor and he bid five spades and when he bid five <laughs> spades, he did his partner's pass as a support pass. <laughs> so uh, that was, that, you know, pretty ridiculous. I mean, at least we were saying, well, at least he alerted the cheat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, it was actually one of the posts I read was so funny. Um, someone was saying, I've been trying to get hold of uh, Fantoni Nunes, but they're not answering their phones. Maybe they're not getting a signal. <laughs> <laughs> um, a bit more on being recorded. I know I've be played with it being recorded, and you don't think of it as they're videoing you. It seems like it was sort of introduced somewhat as like people could just watch you live and watch the table and seemed like they were just introducing another feature rather than uh, yeah, for catching Yeah, I think originally you're right, Pete. I think exactly that. They introduced it to put the video next to the hand so people could watch, watch it live. They weren't actually thinking of this extra little part that there was to it. Well, not a little part, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, obviously they realized that they needed you know, they needed to stop all the Lance Armstrongs of the bridge world. <laughs> <laughs> it's a partnership game. You can't just have one Lance, Arms Lance Armstrong and bridge. What do you reckon you guys would do, right? Like, you know, you're, you're playing with your mate for, you know, five, ten years or whatever, and he's like, hey, bro, I, I, I really struggle on lead. And you're like, yeah, you know, same. And he's like, but, you know, couldn't we do something about it? <laughs> what, like maybe play like thirds and fifths? Or no, he's like, no, no, no. Like, can you tell me what you want me to lead? And then they're like, all right, sure, okay. How do you actually find someone like that? You know, uh, I, yeah, I just well, don't know. Well, I don't know anyone. My theory on Fisher Schwartz is that uh, this is just nothing to base this on whatsoever. This is 
obviously they haven't been uh, convicted yet for either of them, but my theory is that they Fisher was playing against Fantoni and realized something was up and basically said, basically, teach us or we'll dob you in. <laughs> um, the reason I say this is if people want to have a look at Fisher and um, Nunes, with, you know, just trying to put them side by side, Mannerisms are very similar, like the coughing and the clicking of their pens, and you know they do very, uh, very similar things. Just out um, of curiosity, um, I know you don't have time at the moment, but have you looked at a pair that you think is completely innocent and tried to put a code together or something, and seen what like percentage chances they hit on something? I actually have. To, I have done that not to, not to see if they're guilty or not, but just to see the difference to how people play their car. Like when this all the situation was going on, I just wanted to see what was normal. I mean, how people would normally actually play their cards and if it would change. Yeah. Some people just throw their cards and they do change, but in general, I, the most common thing I saw was that people actually led their card horizontally, or it would hit the table horizontally, maybe on an angle. But if you're right-handed, you pull your card out and you put it down on the table. Yeah. So it's actually like to actually turn it around vertically is actually not a normal action. So you actually have to do something abnormal. But um, no, actually, I'll, I'll grab a couple of your videos, Peter, and I'll have a look and see what I can find. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I was just wondering, because when I have played, like I know I like fidget and do all kinds of weird stuff because like, I was just wondering, like, could, like, if you just looked at a pair, could you find something that they did consistently, but then try and match it with the bridge? But, like... Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, like, we don't go into these things lightly. Like, we, we would never just use one match. Yeah. Uh, that's not enough. Like, you, you can see how much data there was for Fisher Swartz before we actually put it in. I mean, they were actually put up uh, a little bit earlier. Um, and everyone sort of got on the bandwagon to see what they could find. But Fantoni Nunes, obviously, we knew we had to be more careful because they've got uh, a pretty powerful person who uh, has hired them. Yeah. And but I, I, there's no way I think that um, Zimmerman knew. I mean, Helgen and Hounas, two of the best guys in Bridge. I mean, they didn't know. I mean, how you know they these guys were deceiving people for so yeah. long. So there's no uh, suggestion that they knew that, but. We would not have done anything if we could only find what they were doing worked on one match. Uh, it, it's if you actually watch them play, even all the way through the hand, it's like it's driving a car. It's like second nature to them. That's why I think they've been doing it for so long. Yeah, uh, it's just it's it's just nothing. It's not like they actually have to stop and think. Do I do this? That's why the success rate is so high, because they're doing it even when they don't need to do it. They're doing it on hands that don't matter. Yeah. Right. It's just they cannot turn it off. That's what we suddenly realised. They can't stop it. The other things, you know, they don't do it all the time when they're showing weakness or strength. You know, like if they're both not in the bidding, then what's the point in showing your partner your weak? You're like you know, there's two clubs on your right past seven of Trump. You don't have to sell partner your weak. <laughs> weak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! There was a very I funny video. Was, uh, about it in a should, um, sorry. And what was that? You broke up. I was now. just going to say, I don't think you could look at an innocent partnership and find a, a pattern that was consistent throughout multiple matches. I mean, sure, people have things that they do and things that they do regularly, like a you know a, a mannerism, but you couldn't match. I don't think you could match it to anything as as strongly as you know people have done with Fisher Schwartz and with Fantoni Nunes. I just don't think I just don't think it'll be doable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the correlation right, no, between yeah, um, hand, yeah. Uh, something's weird going on with my video here. I'm not sure if I'm lagging or not. That's oh, right. We've just we've got your um, face on a very uh, very special little portrait there. It's good. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, nice. Yeah, I can see that now. <laughs> <laughs> How do we that? I don't know. We can keep it. It looks good. <laughs> Hey, hey, Pete, can you just make that the entire podcast <laughs> screen? <laughs> well, well, Nick, you look like you just, uh, you look very surprised in your one there. Yeah, I am. You would be too if you were looking at your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am actually looking at it. Um, was there a very <laughs> moment um, when they played uh, Monaco team? It's quite funny. Um, they, in my opinion, they both cheated on the on the same hand. Uh, uh, there's a, a similar ace-queen fifth. Hard and a five-five-seven in count, 
and they both didn't bid uh, very much on this hand. But um, when Fisher was playing against uh, Helnus, he was on the other side of the screen, and Helnus kept on coughing. And Fisher actually said, you know, you should do something, you should stop smoking. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty funny. <laughs> That's good. So we just had a few more comment, comments come in through the chat. Uh, first one was uh, just someone uh, uh, saying, uh, uh, good guy, Trian. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, no. You're uh, breaking up, Ish. <laughs> I think this portrait's even better than the last one. <laughs> I think you're just still having some uh, internet issues, but um. Ah, uh, yeah, we can hear you again now. Ah, oh, the portrait—it's gone. <laughs> um. So some other comments that came through is. I think the best things that came out of these scandals were the camaraderie among world-class players to decipher the codes and the lessons that were learned from the hands that were so public. Thanks, Ish, for that. And also to all the others that helped out. And then uh, Martin Reed was wondering uh, how many other top pairs are still under suspicion. Um, we don't really want to go announcing um, or accusing anyone of Cheating. Okay, well, there's um, Howard and Holland, uh, Jacob and <laughs> yeah. um, Mazowski and uh, whoever she's playing with at this stage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How did you pronounce my last name there, Ish? L.M. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also noticed someone said something, it was Trian's initiative, not the WBF. I actually, um, I don't know about Nick, but I thought I said that, but maybe I was misunderstood. I said that thanks to Nick, uh, they actually had eight cameras uh, in the Europeans as well. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, they would have only had two. Thanks to um, Trian, otherwise, they would have only had two. Um, and Trian has um, basically talked them into letting them have cameras. I think they're getting 12 or maybe more for this next one. And as someone else said, I uh, saw 24 in next year. So, yeah, I did, definitely did not say it was the initiative of the WBF, that is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess um, to answer Martin Reed's question, there are, I would say, three. Three more. The but uh, there is nowhere near the mountain of uh, evidence that we have uh, of these guys. And so, you know, it's just a, um, when we say under suspicion, that's probably a little bit strong. It's just people that we just want to look at that uh, are doing consistently good things all the time. But there's no... Like there's rumours that you hear about Fisher Swartz and there's rumours that you heard about Fantoni Nina's or like some a lot of people did, um, you know. But of the others, there's not nowhere near as much talk. But uh, you know, it's, it, the job's not done yet. Basically, we'll put it that way, as far as we're concerned. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, so we've talked about uh, code breaking and stuff. Uh, what's next? So you mentioned that there's a report that. It's being sent to like the officials, but what do you reckon is going to come from these accusations? Do you reckon the official bodies will do anything? I hope that they will. I hope that they'll um, be. Ta I mean, you know, they need to make examples now because these guys, num number one and number two in the world. Oh, I'm just going to answer Nick here. Uh, yeah. So Nick Farah said, "I heard one pair was going to oh. confess. Is that true?" I tried or to answer three minutes. Then. I am not a member of the site. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's hearsay. It's hearsay. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Neither of them are going to confess that we know of. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. None of the twenty other suspected pairs are going to confess. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you said that um, there had been nothing official done for Fantoni Nunes yet, but what about Fisher Schwartz? Has anything official happened? Like, has uh, they, yeah, they, they made an they, official statement or complaint? They formed a secret panel, uh, not a secret panel, uh, um, they formed a panel in Israel basically where whatever they decide is final. And of course the first order of business of Fisher Swartz was to deem this panel uh, illegal. Um, that was their first error and that, they, that got thrown out. So they, they, they are being done, they're being looked at, and um, their hands are being looked at, and I think a decision will be made on them very soon. 
the problem with the Fantini Nunes situation is obviously it's only just happened, and they haven't uh, they haven't got all the evidence yet. I mean, the evidence was basically put. Evidence was sent to some of the people, but it was basically put. We decided that we no, well not me, but Boy decided and uh, Bridgman is that if uh, this didn't happen this way, then it wasn't going to happen in time. So it was basically putting pressure on uh, the Monaco team to do the right thing, as as one would say. Yeah. Which is exactly what happened to the Israel. They realised the writing was on the wall, even though. Everyone is entitled to due process and their day in court. They realised, okay, well, we're going to have to uh, pull out until the results of these uh, results of this happens. And if it turns out that they are innocent, then they will be able to sue every single person who's made one of those comments on Bridgman. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, like I say, I think the odds of them being innocent is like a four with twenty zeros after it. Yeah. <laughs> So, what do you think will happen um, with if you know if Fisher Schwartz did get caught guilty? What would you say? Like, what would your guess be for what? what okay, would happen my to guess them? for Fisher Schwartz would be banned for life from playing together, and I would wow. say at least ten years for them because of their rap sheet. They're like multiple offenders. It's not, if you have a look at the site um, BridgeCheaters.com and you can look at their history. They uh, have a history that any cheater would be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was yeah, one complaint that. that was made um, in the Europeans um, that was published, and it was actually a complaint made by Fisher about Peter Frieden, um, calling him, uh, calling him, Peter Frieden called him at the bar a world-class cheater. Now I, I know that um, he got in trouble. Uh, for that, he and he had to face a disciplinary committee. I don't know if anything happened with that, but I know he had to do. He had to face something there. Um, I also know that the doctor, German doctors, are considering suing him because that's their title. Uh, <laughs> uh, and oh, my Antony Nunes might also go get on the bandwagon on Peter Frieden and get him <laughs> get some credit. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so that was uh, like it's quite funny that. He made a complaint about him saying this at a bar, like outside of the bridge game. He put a complaint in, and of course they followed it up. And I'm, I'm sure now nothing will happen to Freedom, and maybe a medal or something. But uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So with the um, just the process that has gone through, it's been obviously really tiring on you and Boyer and everyone that's involved, and in a lot of work's gone in, and it's probably not. A good technique for catching cheaters. Do you reckon what's going to happen in the future for trying to stamp out cheating? Um, well, first of all, if everyone knows that the videos are there and they're there to be viewed, I mean, if you're trying, if you're cheating through uh, trying to do an illegal signal uh, and you're being videoed, you're going to get caught eventually. I mean, people are going to work it out eventually. You just can't. Uh, it looks like I don't think you can get away with it. Either. You, said, you said it's not a good method. I don't know. Apart from my lack of sleep, I think uh, the videos <laughs> are a pretty good method of catching cheaters. No, not the uh, video. I meant the um, like it had to be put out on the internet and people. Yeah, spread obviously over the that's not. Yeah, but the reason that this happened this way wasn't because um, it was the only way to catch them. It was the time. It was the people like Boyer. The he didn't want. There to be a, like a corrupt European Championships. Yeah. So he wanted to make sure that stuff happened before the tournament started, and made sure that these people didn't go. Either they pull out themselves, and he gave. To his credit, he has rung everybody. Yeah. He has rung everyone he has suspected. He has spoken to them personally, and said, <laughs> "You know, you guys are done. Like, why don't you just come forward and save yourself?" Basically, I mean, if you come forward and admit it, then you're probably going to get a much less sentence than if you. Go make them. Everyone spend a whole lot of money doing everything to convict you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, do you reckon they're going to instigate new rules on like people have said like maybe get proper committees or WBF anti cheating committees or things that actually focus on solving this before it gets to a player trying to find another player of cheating and that gets someone outside of that to do this work. Right. Well. I think that they should do. Um, I think they should have some sort of um, committee of 
experts. Uh, the only problem that that might be what if some of the experts on the committee are uh, involved. I mean, I actually had a look at the people who were on the High Level Players Committee because I was going to do a letter to everyone to get them to send something to the WBF and then one of the people on that committee is uh, Fantoni. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how you go about choosing the committee but maybe you have a couple of different ones or whatever and let's say you have a panel of five or six and you have to have 100% unanimous to ban someone and five out of six or something to take it to a tribunal and get them to explain themselves. Yeah. Uh, the other possibility is basically anyone who wins or anyone who gets a medal in an event uh, basically have to just answer questions on why they did what they did. I mean, you know, you can, people who say, like, the diamonds always break badly or this or, you know, things like that, that just doesn't fly. I mean, those guys, even though there was talk about those guys forever, they got convicted after one hand because there had been so much talk about them. So they were, that was Lanzarote Baratti, they were convicted after one hand they were outed because they were just looking for a, a job, you know, any chance to get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, another comment from Dave Thompson. Ish, do you have an opinion about getting rid of bidding boxes and using a tablet or something else for bidding? Getting rid of the uh, tray? Well, I mean, obviously that would um, maybe or might reduce part of it, but... In a way, I actually quite like the fact that we have this method. We have bidding boxes, and we have the opportunity to catch people if they want to get, if they want to try and cheat. Um, we have the option to get. We don't want these guys in the game. If we if we get rid of that and we have just tablets and you know, like it sort of takes away part of the the you know the camaraderie part of it. And I mean, what are you going to do next? Like everyone's playing in separate rooms, and you might as well just stay at home and play on a computer. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, obviously all that you know. They need to make the, they need to fix the uh, bridge base uh, as well. I mean, I can't <laughs> tell you the amount of times uh, people uh, finesse me from my queens on that on, on that side. <laughs> <laughs> but people are always going to find a way to cheat, whether it's with the bidding the bidding bot, like the bidding um, tray and or whatever. Like it doesn't matter. You could take them unless you put everyone in individual rooms. People are going to find ways to cheat. Well, we hope that we they, can actually discourage people enough, like, I mean, if, if we've caught these guys, number one, number two in the world, obviously thought they were untouchable, um, the Israelis have won everything since 2011, um, you know, and if the penalty is severe enough, I mean, obviously the shame will be enormous, and I'm sure Zimmerman's the, not going to take too kindly if Fantania Nunes are found cheating, they're going to, uh, he's going to try and get a lot of his money back. He spent a lot of money on them, that's for sure. Yeah. So mm. I think if the penalties are harsh enough, then maybe we might be able to discourage it. I mean, it is the greatest game in the world. It's, uh, it would be a pity to ruin it because you're just worried about cheaters all the time. Um, I think having all the top matches videoed should be knowing that the videos are going to be reviewed. Pay someone. You just basically have to pay someone uh, to go through the video after a final. I mean, you know, like you watch a video and you'll see something strange. And if you see something strange, then you get more videos of that person. That's basically what happened. We saw something strange. We looked at the other hands. And you just sort of snowballs from there. You just, you know, patterns will emerge and you'll see what's going on. Um, and the, maybe if you can make the tablet personable enough where it's, you can still play at the table, I'm sure that would be fine if you could do that. Uh, you know, like that would certainly stop people doing the gap pass, as we called it. Or <laughs> yeah, I was just saying that I don't think it would be necessary. You know, like I mean, like you say, it ruins the 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 communication, the social social aspect. But the part of the game is sitting at a table with three other people, and yeah, I just don't think it's necessary to start removing aspects of that part of it just because of people who are cheating. Like you said, you don't want to ruin the game because of these. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's all, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, um, once you go down that track of electronics and that part, then mm -hmm. you're just opening the door to getting it to be more and more like that. Then next thing you know, there's going to be north and east in one room and south and west in another room, and you know, it's sort of going to lose the uh, the camaraderie. I mean, you know, some of the best times I've had is uh, when we've had fun against at the table with other, you know, with our friends. I actually. He didn't know he was getting fleeced, but I was actually watching um, Bobby Levin play a match against Van, um, 
Fantania Nunes, I think, and he was having that bit of fun with Fantania on his side of the screen. Little did he know that uh, he was getting fleeced at the same time, getting pickpocketed. Yeah. Uh, Alright, a couple more comments. Uh, firstly, DT says the tablet is just for the auction, still using normal cards and screens. So I think it's at the table, but just using. But why would everyone have their own tablet, or like, you know, would you be sharing like the tablet? I mean, I don't think it's like to work that out, but just you know, uh, yeah. I mean, it might happen in the case of the. I mean, Fisher Schwartz were using the tray and the board in particular to transmit lots of information. I mean, in the case of Fantoni Nunez, it wouldn't help at all, really. I mean, it would help with the, the gap pass, but you've still got the whole, oh, I'm just going to score up now. I'm just going to put my scorecard down here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no. uh, have a little chat to my screen mate, and, you know, I play the card, and the way in which I play the card is the way that I'm transmitting the information. So I've read on Bridge Winners as well that people have suggested that you have a little box on the table where you have to play your card, which actually isn't so bad. You know, it's, it's kind of helpful for the viewer up operator as well because there are a lot of people who um, play their cards but don't play them in a way that's easily seen by the operator. And I think one of the things from this scandal is that, that we've learned is that operator, operators who understand and bridge and who understand the importance of following every spot uh, are really, really important because you're going right. through these matches with a fine tooth comb. You can, if you if you can trust the spots that are played, if you can trust the order of suits being attacked and so on, you can easily just flick through a flick through a match on BBO, see if there are weird things, and that way you know you're not watching two hours of video for, you know, maybe nothing. You can go right. through the, that scorecard in ten minutes and then be like, all right, this is really weird. I'm going to watch the video now, or all right, this this match seems fine. Okay, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with. That. I mean, um, I actually saw a number of matches when I was doing my research that uh, you click on the thing and it, the contract's already done and the stranger are making ten tricks, or you know, you didn't even get to see any of the play yeah. because the operator lost the play. Some of the players are too fast. So yeah, you you a good view graph operator is invaluable, not just for this part of catching cheaters, but actually for improving your game. You want to see exactly what spot yeah. card the top players have played. You want to see uh, not only that, like maybe if you're also like one of the things that I do when I go and play a tournament, I, I want to watch, I replay matches that have been on bridge base against potential opponents. And it's terrible if the bridge, the view graph operator is just randomly clicking low cards and you don't know exactly whether they've actually just been giving false counts or not. You don't, you know, you would, uh, it's a it's a handy teaching tool to see what's actually what your opponents have been doing, and I, I think actually more countries should do the same thing, should use that or should encourage their teams to study um, matches of the teams that they might be playing. Basically, yeah. it's uh, you get a you feel much more comfortable when you sit down against a pair, a top class pair, and you've watched literally played with them effectively uh, half a dozen matches on BBO. You know what their preempting style is, you know whether they open 11 point hands or not. Some people always play their second lowest spot no matter what. And it's just a very good tool and to familiarize yourself with people's type of play. Yeah. Alright, might uh, move on to the final topic which was, I was going to talk about the Bermuda Bowl. Um, Nick, you're going to the Bermuda Bowl. Do you reckon yeah. this is cheating scandals changing? Your thoughts Have you learned any new, uh, new tricks, uh, Nick? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, so my teammate Gao Tislevol summed it up, summed it up best, and he said, "I mean, he actually said it sadly, but I, I love the, I think it's actually fantastic." He said, "You know, the more scandals there are, I mean, give it a couple of weeks or so, and we'll be favourites, you know, <laughs> and keep them coming, <laughs> right? It'll be a, a two-team ball." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. New Zealand versus Australia. Heads up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and, and I was talking to my dad about it, and he was saying, he's played for the New Zealand team quite a few times, and he said, "Yeah, I kind of wish I was playing this year. You know, I think I think I would have been able to get into the eight this time." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, it's uh, it's I mean, it's going to be in, it's actually really good going in as kind of a, an amateur team, I guess, because all the professional teams, the 
Europeans, Americans are going to be watched like hawks. You know, there's <laughs> going to be so much scrutiny of all the all the video recordings and. I mean, dude, you can. Everyone can watch me and Glenn if they want to. They're just gonna <laughs> give themselves a headache or something. I don't. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to us. Please, by all means, drink. watch all that. Yeah, keep keep watching Germany and USA and all that. There's, oh, it's beautiful, beautiful music to my ears. Well, um, funny thing is, uh, I actually rang a friend of uh, a mutual friend of all of ours, uh, Dennis Bildy, before the story broke. <laughs> And I said, uh, pack your bags, buddy. About a week ago, I rang. He said, what? And I sent him all the information, and I said, uh, yeah, I just think you're going to, I think you've got a good chance of going to the beard of all this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just basically said Sweden could go. But I rang him, and I said, I think, yeah, I think you're in. <laughs> it was a, a, about, a bit of a big call, but with the evidence that we've seen, and we knew that was going to come out, it was uh, a fairly accurate one. Yeah. Yeah. So are Denmark going now? Sweden and Denmark are the two teams. Yeah. That yeah. Have been so yeah, it's up. actually quite interesting because if they if the hearing had already been heard and they deemed that they were cheating Israel and um, Monaco to those players and those teams, then they would probably take away all their scores from the matches and it would be two completely different teams that would qualify. Like Bulgaria, yeah. I think, got creamed by both those teams. Yeah. So they probably would have actually gone. Uh, ahead of Denmark France, for sure. France as well. But because these teams, yeah, France. Because these teams just pulled out, then they, um, the next that is to all they could do was just the next in line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'd be too hard to to you know try and make it fair. You just sort of have to deal with what's happened, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Just accept that it's yeah, been, yeah. the whole situation's been rooted. You know, let's just yeah. try and. Rather than finding the absolute best possible outcome, just try and find it a good one. And I think this is a good outcome. You know, both teams have taken the honourable uh, route of pulling out. Um, and both of the European teams that you know were closest to qualifying at the time um, have had the opportunity to play, and they haven't been able to field their absolute best teams. But they have they they've both fielded decent teams, yeah. which is yeah. So, you know, saying quite a bit for one week out of <laughs> going to the Bermuda Pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, had another comment from the chat saying, people have been really down on top players for not detecting the cheating earlier. I imagine it's almost impossible to follow the entire hand and watch for cheating, uh, even if you're the best in the world. Can they really do that, especially with a time limit? I know if I play bridge, I struggle enough to focus on the cards, let alone what my <laughs> opponents are doing. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the thing. You're not going you're not, you're not turning up at a bridge table to try and see if your opponent's cheating. You turn up at the bridge table to try and play bridge. And often you're not even thinking about what's what they're doing. It's only like... And, and also bear in mind that everyone's saying, like, why haven't we found this earlier? There hasn't been that much footage of uh, people playing bridge online. Yeah. I mean, I actually didn't even know that there were all these videos from the Europeans. So it was only until only recently that I actually knew that. It, in fact, after the tournament in the Spin Gold uh, last month in Chicago was the only time I actually realized that there was all this some information available online. I knew there was um, the occasional match from 2011, 2013, but this was done on a live stream account that was the WBF owned. Trian now uh, runs it, and nothing bad is going to happen to the videos now. But they <laughs> just um, they just had a like a temporary subscription, and after six months, the videos got taken down. So a lot of the videos that were done are not. I mean, unless people have actually saved them on their computer, we actually don't have access to those videos. I mean, there's only the like a few videos that are available, whereas there should be. I know there's only there's only one or two sets available of the Beauty of All final, for instance, and those are ones that were made from people with the hand in the main screen and the video in the corner. So you can't actually see that much that clearly. Yeah. If there are people out there watching or who have actually video um, downloaded those videos when they were available, they were available for six months from when they were made, uh, we would love to uh, have access to them uh, to look at them. Um, because you know all that information is basically in cyberspace somewhere, unfortunately. Yeah. And obviously, it's not going to happen anymore. but. People say we didn't catch them and it took us ages. Well, there isn't actually that much video out there 
that's uh, watchable apart from the Europeans was excellent quality. Yeah. And if you go and have a look in 2011, 2013, you can see the occasional video from a match, but there's a big booby bridge base hand in front of it. Yeah. So it's actually just a little corner that you're watching. <laughs> That'd be pretty impossible to look at. Yeah. yeah. So is that card horizontal or vertical? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Or is that just a pixel? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, it's my dirty screen. Wait on. And it'd be almost impossible to to come up with conclusive evidence without video, surely. Yeah. Um. Yes and no. Like we're going to um, try and see what we can come up with. Uh, Put it this way, there were these stats, so let me see if I can find them, just, um, I got uh, sent this recently, I'm not going to mention any other names of the stats, but I'll mention some percentages, uh, um, so, just bear with me one second, I'm uh, technically challenged most of the time, <laughs> okay, here it is, okay, so, um, this is one of the stats. It's um, only one of the side is bidding, so it's you're leading, and you get a point if you hit the ace, king, or queen in your partner's hand, and zero points if you don't. So on this list, the person with the highest success rate was Fisher and Swartz with 80% out of 377 hands. Um, and 79.3 percent was Alanu Wadlow and Alanu or Waddle, whatever you call the it. Germans. The Germans. The Dark Waddle. Yeah. yeah, the German doctors. Um, they were 73 <laughs> percent. Um, Fantoni Nunes out of 2,000 hands. These were hands obviously that had video, like uh, just hands from Bridge Base. 2,000 hands, they were 66.3 percent. Um, so those are uh, the three pairs. Um, this stat was actually just done for the recent tournament, so Lanzarote Baretti aren't actually in there. But to give you an idea of some other pairs, obviously not suspected, <laughs> you got uh, Michael Rosenberg and Zia, 46%. Mark Allen Stansby, 51%. Max Ross Rodwell, 51%. What's your percentage? Uh, sorry? <laughs> what's your percentage? Um, I'm about 1%. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played in the uh, Europeans. Oh. I haven't played much in the Bermuda Orb, no, but I'm actually not on the list, uh, so it just means I'm a very average uh, player. <laughs> so, you know, you look at those stats for that, that amount of hands, uh, maybe if there's maybe there's a certain number where someone is so far ahead of someone else, then, you know, that that's, you might be able to use the hands alone to to build the case at least, yeah. uh, at least enough information to ask them to explain themselves. Yeah. You know, that, that could be a way. I mean, when you have people like, you know, people who are just 50% who we consider great players of the world, Algamo and Hounos, 55%, Levin Weinstein, 55%, and you have the other guys on 80%, and we would all think that those Algamo and Hounos and Levin and Weinstein are better than Fisher Swords. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how could they be... Well, it's at twenty five percent ahead of them. Something is unusual, and when those when those those first two pairs are like fifteen percent ahead of the next pair, it's also it's uh, something strange. So, if someone um, people are working on something like this to, you know, if someone can get uh, a format done where you can regularly see different types of stats, then you might be able to use the stats to then look at the hands to then build a case. So it's you know. It's it's not impossible to do it without uh, without you know without just having video. You can do it in other ways. So. Yeah. All right. On that note, we might uh, wrap it up there. Thanks again, Ish, for joining us. Much appreciated. No problem. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Good to have you. No worries. <laughs> and thanks all for watching. See you next time. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.